Real Talk is proudly sponsored by Huawei P20 Pro and MTN. Each week for 10 weeks, we're giving away the latest Huawei P20 Pro and 10 gigabytes once-off MTN data to 10 amazing storytellers. All you have to do is share your special moments with us. Follow at Huawei ZA and at MTN ZA and tag us with hashtag Huawei P20 and hashtag Real Talk Moments. We want to see and hear your stories and create lasting connections across the country. Each week, there's a different theme. So keep checking our social pages for details and you could be a winner. Welcome back. Welcome to Real Talk as we kickstart a brand new week. My name is Azania Musaka. Thank you for being with us here on SABC3. The stage is yours. You know what? For centuries, many, many centuries, human beings have always had the curiosity to satisfy different spiritual and physical needs. And it's because of that curiosity that one finds themselves exploring the plethora of practices that exist out there. And so tonight on this episode, you will be going through this journey with us, this journey of discovery of some of these alternative healing methods that exist. Crystal healing is one of those alternative healing techniques that we'll be exploring. And it involves the use of crystals and other stones to cure a variety of ailments and to protect against disease. My first guest is a former guest on the show, Yanita Singh, and she joins us on the couch to tell us more about crystal healing. <coughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Oh, it's a woman of many talents. Thank you. Well, you know, I think um, I'm coming as a naysayer, as someone who, does, who doesn't know much about this and will probably need some proving to. <laughs> what is crystal healing? Crystals have a specific vibration, just like humans have. We, every time we eat, sleep, love, laugh, we vibrate. Mm -hmm. All our cells in our bodies vibrate. Um, crystals have the same kind of vibrations and Depending on, on the crystals that you have, they can help with certain... I mean, sometimes you, you end up feeling totally out of whack. Yeah. Or on other times you feel like you can conquer the world. Both are still kind of out of balance. Um, crystals, because of their vibrations and our, matching our vibrations, helps to settle our mm. emotions, helps to settle our um, all, all the rampaging that's going on in our cells. So, um, and, and crystals, each crystal has a different vibration. Yes. Um, and they, they, for example, quartz watches. There's a crystal in there that keeps impeccable time. Um, there are medical machines that uses quartz crystals yes. because of the laser, particularly. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, um, and and these crystals are associated with diamonds. Let's say diamonds are used for love, mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. yet you can cut. It, it's the hardest stone yes. available. It's still a crystal. So all of these things, they are. Um, we, we can use them for, and I just wanted to say something about what you said earlier about um, curing ailments. Mm -hmm. I would be a bit um, reluctant, reluctant to say cure, uh -huh. because a lot of it is, especially with alternate therapy, it's, it's, it's the therapist meeting the client halfway. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you've heard of placebo effects, you've heard yes. of those kind of things. So yes, they can work, but to go as far as saying it can cure an ailment. I have no, I know of um, instances that this has happened, mm -hmm. but I don't say that. I have clients who come to me and say, well, if I do crystal healing, I can well, come I off my anti de the antidepressants. Well, yeah. And I say to them, no, you can't, because I'm not a doctor. Medical doctors put you on, on medicine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what I can do is help your body get back to its original form where you didn't have this ailment. Um, where your body knows how to fix itself using crystals, using Reiki, using alternative therapies. It's just teaching your body to go back to what it already knew it before knew. medicine came in. I see. There's a space for so medicine and there's a space for uh, holistic methods. Healing. Yes. All right. So, so it's almost this uh, inward body knowledge that we've shut out, that we've silenced. And this, uh, this allows us to tap back into that. So how did you get to be a, a crystal healer? You're wearing one around your neck. 
I that is yes, a type of crystal, right? It is. It okay. is a citrine. I have ruby earrings. I love crystals. Um, my first journey with crystal came about um, when I was six. We had moved from Uganda mm -hmm. to the UK as refugees. And um, I was just walking around and I saw this beautiful pink rock. And I mean, I was lost in the country. It was cold. I'd never known cold. Yeah. Um, and I saw this beautiful pink rock and I remember it so well. I just picked it up and I thought, I'm just going to hold on to it. And mm -hmm. my whole day changed. I, I, I felt lighter. I felt, um, and I didn't associate it with the stone. Yes. Got home, I put it to the side and went on with my household chores and stuff. Um, and a couple of days later, I picked it up and I, and I put it in my pocket because I thought I really wanted to look at it and, and find out about it. And I, my day was really good and it became my best friend. Mm -hmm. That little rock became, I didn't know what it was. Um, over the years, um, when, I, when I hit uh, after school and, and college, and when I came to this country, I started looking at crystals. Yeah. And I thought, what? That's the crystal. Ah, what is it? And I read about what the rose quartz actually symbolizes, and it teaches you mm -hmm. unconditional love, first for yourself and then for others. Um, and it just, it just brought me so much peace. Mm -hmm. I still have that. Um, and... Uh, all by having a crystal with you. All by having a crystal with me. It's interesting because I remember <coughs> visiting a dietitian. There are a number of other types of people, people who practice other types of disciplines mm -hmm. where they would have crystal in their rooms. I remember she had quite a few of them lined up there uh, along the wall. I've got two crystals mm -hmm. as well. Not that I use them for anything. I just thought they were very beautiful. I see crystal shops all of the time with a number of types of stones. Mm -hmm. um, I have a colleague who has a pendant with different stones and they're all for different reasons. She wears it for a variety of reasons. Uh -huh. So I guess they are, they're there and maybe we just haven't applied or extended ourselves to exploring what more they, they're, they're about. Well, the beauty of crystals is that you don't have to. You don't yeah. have to um, look at them and say, well, you do this for me and you do this for me. Mm -hmm. Crystals will do the work, whether you want them to or not, whether you believe in it or not. Wow. They, all they require is respect. Respect them, don't, you know, just dust them off or don't hide them in the corner. They will work. It's, that, that's what they're programmed to do. They um, leave them lying around. Like the, most of the people who have crystals lying around, it's mm -hmm. just to keep the air cleansed of negative energies. Right. And is it true <coughs> then that they it absorb is. the negative energy? They help to change but the vibration yes. in the space? Well, think about, think about what they are. They are... Uh, it's it's something with a frequency. We we have a frequency. We yes. have a vibration. Yes. They have the same. Um, our intentions um, can change the the energy of a room. We mm. walk in there and we can be mad and we can be angry, and that filters out into the room. Mm -hmm. We come in there happy and jolly and um, and centered. It changes the energy of the room. Same thing with the crystals. So the crystals, you leave them out there and they just do what they need to do. So I could be as anxious as ever, could be overwhelmed, anxious, you name it. And if I have this external means, as, as in the crystal, yes. which is external, it's outside of what is within our control. Are you saying that my mood would shift, the energy in the room would yes, shift? Yes, absolutely. Um, it has, your body can't, help itself right. doing that because your the crystal will bypass your mind it's your mind that causes all the the um confusions and the and the anxiety yeah your mind causes it what you are doing with the crystal is bypassing that and just allowing the two frequencies to help each other wow and it 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 is an absolutely fascinating um i mean who would have thought something that looks so beautiful and shiny and different colors could be so helpful so what about the people that say this is a pseudoscience that this is just simply you observe this and it's just a placebo effect because you believe in it therefore you will see the signs of the change that you want to see my take on that is does it matter because if it's helping you does it matter um, if it's a placebo, it doesn't matter if it's your intentions or just your belief that it's going to help you. Mm. Does it really matter if it's going to help? But in, in this age of science, <coughs> I'm sure you can understand that question. Yes, I can understand yeah. it. And I mean, I'm, I'm a very scientific person too. Um, 
but all I needed was the example of quartz in a watch or quartz in these medical machines in mm -hmm. theatre mm -hmm. that um, convinced me, okay, there's, a, there's, there's, there's some science behind it and yes. you look into it. Um, the crystals have a chemical formula. Yes. So if it has a chemical formula, science is already in there. Um, and if you really push aside um, your own mind mm -hmm. and allow the crystal just to just to hold it close your eyes see the images talk to it see if it talks back where do you feel it in the body you will actually resonate with that crystal so it doesn't it it doesn't need um like i said earlier it doesn't need you to believe in it okay it will function whether you believe or not all right wait all right <laughs> all right that's a bold statement that's a bold claim <laughs> I think we should put this to the test. Okay. Can you prove it to me? Can I prove it to my, well, can we, can you show me how? Can we do that after this? I break? can prove it to the extent that you're willing to yes. accept. I will open myself up. So okay. how about we do that? So join me after the break because Yanita is going to demonstrate how crystal therapy works right here on the couch after <laughs> the break because I'm still in a little bit of disbelief. I don't know about you. Let's see. Welcome back to Real Talk. Now, if you've just joined us, we're exploring different kinds of healing methods, and one of these involves crystal healing as a method. And joining me on today's show and on the couch is Yanita Singh, who's a crystal healer. And she's about to show me exactly how crystal healing works. So, Yanita, during the break, you laid out the different crystals. Mm -hmm. They're right here in front of me. <coughs> so, how does this work? Okay. Um, crystals pick you. You don't pick crystals. Uh -huh. Um, so what I want you to do is look at the crystals and see which ones jump out and say, pick me, pick me. Yes, I can see them already. If you have more than one that are jumping out, uh -huh. take them both and put one in each hand. All right. And then just, this um, one and this one. just uh, close your hands around them and then just focus individually uh, on each crystal. And then one of them you will feel that you need to put back. Okay, right, now hold the crystal in your hand and just close your eyes and think, if you have a question for the crystal or you need an answer. Um, what kind of questions, like how grand <coughs> can it be? Because even when, a sh when you see a shooting star and people say, make a wish, and you think, oh gosh, you know, it's so daunting. You know, there's a, a variety of yeah, things, we freeze, a myriad of think. questions. Do something Simple. Okay. For now. Okay. You know, once you start working with crystals, all right. And you just use something simple. All right. For now, you know, maybe. I've got my question. Um, okay. I've got my question. So it's a decision I've been thinking, I've been needing <laughs> to make. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just want you to just be with that crystal. You know, take your mind away Do from it and eyes? just. I feel yes. better closing my eyes. Close your eyes. Um, if see if you can see any visions that come into your mind. If you hear anything. Um, in, in relation to the qu answer to your question. If you feel um, <clears throat> a shift or a, a, a sensation in your body. I feel here. Okay. Around my chest. There was a little bit of a, an aching kind of feeling. Sometimes the sensations that we feel, mm -hmm. I always say there's no specific sensation. You may feel hot, cold, aching, you may feel yes, elation. But it's the part of the body that stood out. Yes, it's the part of the body that... Um, hmm. So what you have picked is yes. hematite. Hematite is a very grounding stone, mm -hmm. but a very protective stone. Mm. And if you have... Um, periods of time that you just can't focus, that you can't, um, that you need to just just ground yourself, to be, it when your head's in the, the clouds, yes, out of the stress. When your head's in the clouds, hematite will help to bring you clarity. down okay. and to bring clarity and mm -hmm. to be where your feet are. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, the sensations that you're probably feeling in your 
um, heart chakra area um, are probably just helping you just ground, saying it's okay to be where you are, it's okay to be in your skin. Mm -hmm. um, whatever decisions that or answers that you are looking for would be, um, uh, sorry, the, the, whatever the, the message that you are receiving, mm -hmm. I um, hope that it made sense or you did hear something. If not, <coughs> it's generally because the first thing we hear, we will fight it because we don't, that's not. We doubt. We doubt it. But, um, and then you start thinking, you know, did I really hear that? No, I couldn't have heard that. And then it said it's not gone. yet. Not yet. Not yet. Then that is your answer, especially with something that is grounding because it's brought you from your head in the clouds down to being in your skin yes. um, and allowed you to be fully present with the question and with the crystal. Okay. Because I did kind of shoot away, thinking, no, 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 I want a clear answer. <laughs> and almost trying to see past it through the first response or the first thought that came to mind. We do that because we think, no, did I hear something? Okay. What, what was that? Maybe I didn't hear it. And that's where the trick comes in listening to the crystals. It's the first answer they give you. Mm -hmm. And I refer to them as they because I don't know what else to call them. <laughs> they go and call them. It's the first response that you get from the crystal that is the response from the crystal. But then our mind goes over and says, no, wait. Because we're not used to hearing voices yes. in our head. Yes. We're not used to hearing the voices. We're not used to hearing something outside. So our mind takes over and says, no, you didn't really hear that. Did I hear that? No, I don't know. And then by that time, you've forgotten what it was. Mm -hmm. The trick is if, don't forget, it did answer you. Right. Um, uh, and I'm actually, I'm, I, I, hematite is one of my favorites. Really? Right? Purely because um, I literally live in the clouds with my feet on the floor mm -hmm. and oscillate between the two. So when I need that grounding, I have a, I have a hematite turtle. It's carved into a turtle and it just stops me. Okay, just stop what you're doing and just breathe yes. and be here. I and did feel calm. I don't know if it was the closing of the eyes. I did feel calm. And even when I opened my eyes, I had to reorientate myself back to you, to <laughs> seeing you over there because there were a couple of things. Mm. There were a couple of things in my mind's eye, mm. but not the studio, right. not the setting. And did, it, did you have any um, images that came into your mind? I saw an island. <laughs> I saw the sea. <laughs> That's lovely because I mean it's 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 about being grounded. I mean, yes. The sea is also it's it's salt. It's grounding. Okay. Um, the island would be the earth would be ground. Mm -hmm. um, whether it comes in the form of an island or it comes in a, a field or um, it's still earth. Grounding. Okay. It's still that grounding. That was interesting. That was absolutely fascinating. <laughs> they feel great to the touch. And thank you for choosing me. Mm. Crystal <laughs> chose me. This is it. Thank you so much, Anita. You're welcome. So after thank the you. break, we'll explore the emotional freedom technique, also known as tapping, known to alleviate symptoms of depression, anxiety, and insomnia. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to Real Talk here on SABC3. The stage is yours. So tonight we're exploring different kinds of healing methods and joining me on the couch next is Bridget Edwards, who is a stress consultant and she'll be telling us more about emotional freedom therapy, also known as EFT. Hello, Bridget. Hi, Zania. Thank you so much for having me here tonight. I think a lot of people are going to find this conversation quite helpful because so many of us are dealing with high levels of stress yes. from uh, from a number of, of reasons and, yes. and issues. But what led you here? What about your life led you to want to be this kind of healer? Well, actually, my life has been defined by stress. So uh -huh. hence the gray hair, <laughs> so young. <laughs> and as a result of that, but I didn't realize it at the time mm -hmm. that my life was preparing me for this journey. So as a young girl, I already had duodenal ulcers at school at eight or nine years old. Yes. I was sent off to boarding school at six. Um, a number of things at school that caused me some stress. I ended up 
developing a type of dyslexia at school as well because of the stress. Mm -hmm. So I had a mechanical eye problem and my eyes weren't tracking the way I should. So yes, that was a result reading. of the stress, mm -hmm. childhood stress. Mm -hmm. And then early on, um, I, my only brother was killed in a car accident. He was 19. Not mm -hmm. long after that, my mum uh, succumbed to cancer. Mm -hmm. So those kind of things were preparing me but I didn't realize that actually that was preparing me for what I consider today as my life's work. Yeah. And now it makes complete sense because at the time I didn't go through university, so I didn't study psychology in the mainstream, which I'm very pleased about because I've actually been able to use my own life's experiences. I see. And that experiential knowledge has made such a difference in the work that I do. And allowing this whole process and to, allowing to be process, led. Yes, to yes, way. to evolve naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's been quite an interesting space for me, quite mm. frankly. And for years, I mean, probably for the greater part of 30 years, I have studied all sorts of different um, alternative complementary therapies because it was something I was interested in as a child. Yeah. For instance, my mum, when I was growing up and being at boarding school to prevent me getting sick, she used to give me a little camphor block yeah. that I would wear around my neck. Mm -hmm. And the girls mm -hmm. used to laugh at me at boarding school because I was wearing this camphor block. But that obviously set a tone because also with the stress that I had as a child, I was sent off to a homeopath yeah. and he had these tiny little white pills that he would give me. So it set a, a whole world of fascination for me part of on a very different, sure. yes, a very different path. Actually. So what is this therapy? So, because it's also known as tapping, okay. not the colloquial em tapping. <laughs> <laughs> well, emotional freedom techniques is actually a tapping. So for instance, if you, and we've all done this, I'm sure you'd have caught yourself doing it. When you can't remember something, you tap on your forehead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When we're impatient and irritated, we tap on a counter. Mm -hmm. um, when we get a shock, especially women, we tend to tap on the collarbone and go, oh my God, oh my God, something has happened, you know, and yeah. we don't, and you look, what are you doing? <laughs> That's our body's innate wisdom actually kicking in. So the ancients knew about meridian therapies. It's well known in acupressure, acupuncture. I've heard of meridian points. In meridian points, which are used in acupressure and acupuncture oh. in, with the needles. Now, yeah. EFT or tapping is without the needles. So we're utilizing the meridian points, but without the needles. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is we're working with the body's energy system, with the innate wisdom of the body. So we all know that we are electric by nature. We also have a water, water components yeah. as well. So we have that natural duality and dualistic principle. If you've ever rubbed your, car your foot on a carpet and then touched a metal yeah, object, a you get a shock. Mm. It's a static. Mm. They use that understanding of the electricity in the body for EKGs and e um, ECGs as well. Ah. So it's understanding that. Now, when our body is disrupted as a result of a traumatic event or an emotion like stress, depression, anxiety, panic, whatever it is, mm -hmm. causes an energy disruption in the physical body. So our energy is not flowing the way it should naturally. Right. And we need that electrical energy and that continuous flow to live in life and to be happy. Mm -hmm. We say, I'm in the flow of life, right? When we're in a good space. I keep hearing flowing, that. you know, the everything's flow of just life flowing. That's in sync with nature, with exactly. the universe. Exactly. With that, with your circadian rhythm, like with all the different rhythms yes, that exactly. come with exactly. this planet. So it's that innate wisdom ah. that EFT is actually tapping into, literally tapping into. So when we work, when I work with somebody, we're actually tapping at specific points on the physical body. So is that where the meridian points? Those are some of the points the that I'm tapping here. So it's here on the collarbone, under the arm. I use ones here on the liver on point, the on, the, on, the on the ribs, uh -huh. uh, on the wrist and the top of my head as okay. well. So there are- Nothing in the lower body? No, actually, because we're just working with the 12 major meridians. Mm. So we're tapping into that. And then while we are tapping, we're bringing in sort of your typical talk therapy or cognitive therapy, which I get the person to talk about and express what is going on. And then we also work with the emotions. So mm. it's a simultaneous physical, mental, and emotional working together and that's why literally in two hours I can take somebody who has come to me because they're traumatized maybe they were hijacked held up at gunpoint raped molested any kind of heinous thing yeah and instantly within two hours they'll walk out smiling and laughing and I would have got them to go through the process and they tap on themselves 
unless they are too traumatized, I might help them with the tapping, but generally I get them to tap on their own. Within two hours? Within I mean, that's two a bold hours. Name. It is completely on my life, every single How time. How intense is this tapping supposed to be? It is very light, very, very light, so you're not having to bash yourself or anything, but I'm talking with the person about the specific event, so we stay very focused on the event itself. Okay. So if it's a depression, maybe that might mean we need to look at multiple events through their life that have caused depression. For instance, um, addictions. Yes. It could have been multiple traumas that caused that. So in other words, I won't necessarily do only a two-hour session. I might do two or three follow-up sessions as well. need a couple well. of visits. Because, yes, I, I mean, what can I can only do so much in two hours. So what about weight loss then? How weight loss is very it? much a part of it. Mm -hmm. Women or men, generally, people put on weight when they are trying to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. It becomes like a protective method. So let me put on some weight and that way I can protect myself from either the, the external world hurting me or from my own pain that is too traumatic for me to withstand, so they will end up putting on weight. Okay. And it's interesting, when I was writing my book, I realized that in researching uh, the aspects of stress that I hadn't acknowledged for myself, I noticed that I was comfort eating. At certain points, suddenly I noticed I need to go to the fridge and get something to eat. Now, I'm not hungry. I've had a good meal. But every now and again, I realize that yes. I'm going to the fridge and seeking out some food mm -hmm. because that I was trying to mask and cover what I was feeling. And obviously, researching and writing my book was triggering certain things. You've written extensively in this book about stress. I mean, I, I can't, just the signs and symptoms alone, uh, yes. tips on how to manage yes. stress. So Self-hypnosis being one of yes. them? I was yes. surprised by that. Yes. Well, I wanted to give people so many different types of processes that right. they could work with. So these exercises. Tapping is just one element of it. And I don't really go into tapping a lot in the book because mm -mm -mm. you actually need somebody to guide you through. Mm. There are a lot of uh, tapping practitioners around the world because it is now mainstream globally uh, as a process right. to use. It is so effective. Mm -hmm. And around the world, therapists are putting out uh, scripts that you can work to. And unfortunately, that tends to give tapping a bad name because someone will work towards the script and say, but it didn't work, mm -hmm. which is not true. Oh, it so works, but you to need home, to I actually... Do it, I do it alone. But it's not working with what you're sitting with specifically okay. because each of us have different things, different issues, different histories, different processes that we want to work with. So when I wrote my book, I thought I need to look at techniques that anybody and everyone can work with. So in the book, I have 16 different exercises mm. because we're different personalities, let's mm. be honest. What you like is on here, maybe I don't like or yes. anybody else out there. And what resonates with you doesn't necessarily resonate with me. So that's why I've got 16 different exercises that yeah. people can work with. And then 50, what I call lifestyle techniques. Okay. So the self-hypnosis is one of those. Eating properly, hydrating, exercise, meditation. Those are various techniques. Yes. Now, I want us to try, maybe there's something you can show us quickly, but what's the role of the subconscious mind or the subconscious versus the conscious? And I know this is a big question mm. for 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, the subconscious basically is everything that we see from our neck down. So if you've got the typical iceberg, 10% is the conscious mind and 90% is the subconscious. Right. So this is the conscious mind, this is the subconscious mind. Mm. And that's what I tap into when I work with I the see. tapping. Right, so let's demonstrate something. Show me how so to tap. This would be one of the classic areas to tap, especially when somebody is stressed. Mm -hmm. With and what? The three middle fingers? Just with your fingers. 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 You can use your whole hand. You can use the flat of your hand if you want to. That's going to make a noise on the mic. Mm -hmm. Flat of the hand. You can even use your fist if you oh. want to. But it's just gentle tap. Nothing on the back? No. You don't need to. Oh, and how long do you calms, need to do it? Literally just, just a couple tapping. of seconds. It calms the body down immediately. The thymus gland sits here high up in the chest, and that releases a calming chemical mm. or hormone into the body, which is the antithesis of the stress hormones. Mm -hmm. So this just calms the body naturally. Right. And, and you can do this beats, in a corporate and you know drum space. Beats. Yes, somehow. Drum beats also. It's yes, a nice they calming so rhythm. This reminds me of that. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Right. Okay, right. So that's how long? 
Yeah, just a few seconds. Can you feel a difference? I did. Yeah, I did. A little bit because relaxed. I could see your face changed. Yeah. Actually, it even said to me, "Sit up straight." <laughs> <laughs> I realized I was slouching. The blockage of energy. Yes. You know what I mean. When so you slouch. When you slouch. That's why sitting behind a computer is so bad for you all yes. the time. You yes. want to be upright so your energy can flow well. Yes. And, and that's what Im happened immediately. Mm. Right. Mm. So, wrists. Yes, you can tap on the wrists. So it basically starts, so we have a setup statement, which is slightly longer, which you start saying a few words here sure. on, the, on the side of the hands mm -hmm. or like that. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we go to the eyebrows, the inside of the eyebrows, outside the side of the chin. eye, under the eye, nose and chin, like right. that. Oh, Collarbone. Bridget, we have a caller. We have a caller for you. Uh, let's join Esther calling from Bronkor Spread. Good evening, Esther. Thank you for calling in. Hi. Yes, good day to you. I have a question for the lady. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, if somebody was diagnosed with bipolar because of a tragic uh, happening in his early years, can she cure him? Can she or can she help? Uh, like, because cure, yes. as I said, uh, as uh, Yanita said, is a complex one. So, all right, let's see what can be done for someone with bipolar and even uh, Yanita said it's not a question of cure exactly but it's about these tools exactly. and ways of managing yes. so bipolar can be worked with I am also cautious with working with people with bipolar because it sometimes can trigger another episode for right. them which because can be into um, because it's also we're also working with something developed in the mind as well so you've got to be careful with what's happening in the brain as well but yes it can help to actually calm the body right and especially when they're going into that heightened state yeah, um, the, like um anxiety panic it can also calm right but so with it them can be done i would in be conjunction with it could be but i would be i would be very cautious in how we work together okay um so not to trigger another mania um because sometimes that can be triggered yeah. with a type one All right. bipolar, yeah. because there's a lot of emotional work involved yes. it's not just tapping you have to go deep yes. within to see where those issues mm. emanate well do join us after the break because we'll be speaking to kinesiology specialist kim lewis Welcome back to Real Talk. Now we're talking kinesiology. Kinesiology, it's, it is a mouthful. <laughs> it's a very gentle, non-invasive form of therapy that allows the body to better heal itself by striking a mental, physical, and chemical balance. And joining me on the couch is Kim Lewis Williams, a kinesiologist. Absolutely, <laughs> She's <on>. here <laughs> to give us the ins and outs of this procedure. I had it on lock before the show. Well, you know kinesiology. It, it really is a mouthful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have to say this all the time all about the time. what you do. I'm used to it now. What is it? <laughs> so kinesiology is basically the working of the muscles and how muscles relate to the body. Oh. And specialized kinesiology is the more holistic approach. So it takes the mind, the body, and the energy and includes it with the body movement. So we can then look at things more holistically, using the muscles as the gateway, if you will, into the rest of the systems of the body. What's so special about the muscles? So the muscles actually have integrity as to what your thoughts or emotions are so depending on what the issue is or what you'd like to work through yes. you can basically then test the muscles against that to see if your body is holding integrity it's feeling strong confident or whether it's not holding integrity and therefore it goes into stress mode mm -hmm. and you can see then where you at what do you need and what kinesiology corrections can we do to help those muscles and the rest of the systems and the mind feel more confident, feel more assured. Mm -hmm. And if it's an issue or something deeper that they're working through, then to also feel more neutral about it, to overcome right. it and to, to be able to just feel more acceptance and serenity around it. That's so interesting because some of the other therapies that we've looked at so almost and not at that metaphysical level or at that physical level. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about flow, it's about energy, it's about vibration. Absolutely. Whereas this is about tissue, it's about Absolutely. muscle. Absolutely. There is a component of energy. You okay. know, we do work with uh, many modalities mm -hmm. if we need those tools within the session. And it also brings in Eastern 
physiology concepts. So we can work with the meridians and with acupressure points and correction points. Yeah. So we bring in a mix of whatever the body needs, whatever the body asks for, so that we can essentially then trigger the body back into more balance right. or the mind. Kim, give me an example. It's all sounding quite abstract. I think I understand what you mean. But if I were to walk into your rooms and say to you, I'm barely sleeping, um, I have long days, I skip meals, I have a lot of anxiety, and maybe sometimes maybe prone to depression. Like mm. if I had to give you that profile, That's usually where would you start? What people are experiencing. Is that quite common? Absolutely. Mm. And so it's about first sitting the person down and saying, okay, tell me about yourself. Yeah. Tell me about your history. Tell me about your childhood. Has anything happened there? Oftentimes childhood stress or just things we learnt or things we picked up from our parents have a knock-on effect to how we respond now. Mm. And so it's about going through those layers and seeing is there something that's correlating okay. and we can also then see if there's any limiting beliefs any sabotages anything that makes a person feel overwhelmed anything that makes them feel stuck or that they can't move forward mm -hmm. and so we can find those little niggly things that you're not aware of that is possibly causing you that anxiety or that depression or making you feel overwhelmed or overthinking that's often a, a huge cause for not sleeping okay. and we can then find out all of that and then say okay what do you need within the session but then also after the session what can you do on your own what awareness can you have what can you continue to do yes so how does the muscle tell you all of this? What do you do to it to check this integrity that affirms that there was a trauma or that affirms that now mm. I am strong enough on a particular issue? Yeah. So basically we have a protocol that we follow and we stack in the information first and foremost and then we check the 14 main muscles, mm -hmm. its integrity against that issue. And the body will straight away show whether it weakens or if it's holding strong. And this will go according to the other system. So the other exercises. So it's, it's moving. a basic, yeah. Some, some movements, and, um, but it's, it's very casual and it's, it's very relaxing. So it's not that you're going to have to come and have a workout. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so you'll leave feeling very relaxed. No, I have a friend who swears by this, <laughs> swears by it. Sometimes she comes back distressed and distraught <laughs> about the things that were revealed in the session. And, and then other be. times yeah. uh, she feels much lighter. Yes. Well, it depends what you're working through. Yes. You know, if you're um, working through very deep-seated traumatic things, like you said, things you weren't even aware of, yeah, yeah. it's going to be quite traumatic at first, but then to continue with the therapy so that you can get those movements, you can work through it, you can get those perspectives and understandings that you need mm. that will then shift it and give the mind some ease and peace around it. So how has this developed? Is it through, is it scientific? It's quite scientific you know, beginnings and medical beginnings, it's actually based on chiropractic corrections. Okay. And so from there, it kind of evolved through bringing in other modalities, mm -hmm. other therapies, other philosophies, and therefore bringing in this mix with the muscles as the key into the body. Okay. It was developed um, over the years through that. Fantastic. Kim, thank you. You thank are you staying so with much. us. By the way, please feel free to give us a call if you have any questions. Our number is on the screen below. Our guests will be back on the couch strictly for your questions and comments. Welcome back to Real Talk and joining me on the couch, we have crystal therapist, Yanita Singh, as well as stress consultant, Bridget Edwards and kinesiologist, Kim Lewis. And they're all here to answer your questions. So give us a call right now. The number is at the bottom of the screen. I've got some <coughs> tweets here. Um, ladies, some questions from our viewers this evening. This one from Nonkululego and it says, does using more than one of these therapies confuse the energies? Are they complementary or? Yes. Yes. yes you're all in agreement mm. how does that work mm -hmm. then mm. well the body is energetic so we will have different things that we feel that we like and will work for us and they are complementary therapies mm -hmm. because we're all working with energy and en energy is uh, the body is accepting of that energy yes and you know when something's not working for you you feel it you, you get a sense that this is not right i went for hypnosis once and <laughs> i left knowing 
exactly that. It's not for me. <laughs> um, and another one, I was looking for a really interesting one about relationship. Yes, and it says, can one use any crystals to attract a relationship or anything they desire? Mm -hmm. That comes from JJ. <laughs> <laughs> um, rose quartz is known as a crystal of love. But first, it's going to teach you how to love yourself. Because mm. if you can't find the qualities in within yourself to love, how do you expect other people to find them? Yeah. So the first thing it would do was is teach you unconditional love for self. Um, there are other the, the crystals that you can use um, to attract love, but it's all in the intention that you set mm -hmm. with the crystal. It's a teamwork. It's you and the crystal and the intention that you sent. The crystal will work, but um, if if energetically you are not in the right space. It still won't. It, no, it's it's going to show you how to love yourself first. Okay. Before you can love somebody else, you need to learn to love yourself mm -hmm. so that you know how to love and then you know how to receive love as well as give love. Oh. So rose quartz is the ideal stone for that. And you can use them... <coughs> Uh, with others, yes, the, the, for the, protection, you know what, for they, grounding. Yes, mm -hmm. crystals work well together. They love being in each other's companies, so <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't matter. No one's going to fight for attention. It will just do what it needs to do and rely on the others to do what they need to do. The only thing I often say with crystals is to make sure that they're cleansed. Um, which we didn't actually talk about. Yes, Crystal. I understand you burn some sage. Well, you can. The, the simple, you know, there's so many different rituals as to cleansing crystals. One of the simplest ways is just either run it through cold water mm -hmm. or to bury them into earth mm -hmm. and leave them there. Um, moonlight helps, sunlight helps, mm -hmm. but don't make such a big deal out of it. Crystals really are very humble, very simple just to show his respect and cleanse us once in a while. There are some crystals, like the clear quartz that we spoke of earlier, will cleanse all the other crystals. So you just put that with all your crystals and because it it um, takes in negative energy, mm -hmm. but it doesn't retain it. So it just sends it out again. So it's it's self-cleaning and will clean all the crystals around it. Oh, wow. So um, if, if the only thing you have is a clear quartz and a rose quartz, you're pretty good. You're good to go. <laughs> yeah, it feels like we're go. talking about some being, <laughs> some sentient <laughs> being out there that's doing all of this work. Um, and then, Kim, <coughs> here's a question <coughs> about kinesiology. Uh, does it help with previous injuries that comes from Mashila? Yes, absolutely. Physical injuries. Yeah, mm. absolutely. It's a big component. So, especially if it's an old injury and it's really stuck or has a lot of pain or not a lot of mobility, then we can get into those muscle areas and the tendons and the ligaments mm. and uh, correct those spaces for more ease of movement and mm. pain reduction. Yeah, so it might take a few sessions, as with any therapy, right. but absolutely it will be very helpful. Back ache. Yes, absolutely. And a lot of the time there's emotion attached to this. So we also need to look at the emotional mm -hmm. components and work through that as well as triggering the physical back into more balance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go to our lines now. We've been, been inviting you to call in, ask a question and uh, pass a comment. And we've got Shireen. Shireen, you're calling from Benoni. Good evening. I am high, Zanya. Um, I just have a question for Bridget. Mm -hmm. um, is she able to help somebody uh, with OCD, a child actually of uh, 18 years old? Oh, okay. Yes. Yes, yes, Bridget? Yes, definitely. What would that entail? Well, it's understanding yeah. where, the so much, <laughs> where the OCD is coming from and what has triggered it. Mm -hmm. um, and it might take a little while to investigate that, but often that kind of behavior is rooted in some kind of trauma. Um, I never and thought of that. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. It's a coping mechanism. That the world needs to be organized in a particular way. Yes, to, in oh. order to be able to live a more structured, safe, secure space. So, right. You know, so uh, what led to that feeling of insecurity that yes. you would want? That's what I would structure I it. would look for that. And it, probably as a, as a child, there might be multiple incidents that have caused that. Mm -hmm. But it's like with any addiction. I mean, we've got, we're addicted to cell phones these days. We can't be without our phones. Mm -hmm. um, the gym, some people have to go to gym every single day. That mm -hmm. becomes obsessive compulsive. Mm -hmm. um, 
Food, for instance, is another one. Alcohol. We all think that addictions are just alcohol and drugs, yes. the bad ones, yes. as we call them. But there are a lot of ways that people manifest these behaviors in order to cope. Mm. People have to wash their hands frequently or have got to check that the door's locked several times before they leave and they'll still come back to check that the door's yeah. locked. There are so many different types of um, obsessive, uh, obsessive compulsive disorders and it's a case of finding exactly what it is and how. And so it might take more than just one session. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I, when I was saying about one session earlier, let me just clarify that. A lot of the time I can do things in just one session and have that sort of miracle session, but there are times where it, I need and the, the, the client actually needs a, you know, a few sessions to be able to resolve something. And, and I think this is a question that applies to, to all <coughs> three of you. The openness and the willingness that the client needs to already come with. Absolutely. How much of that is, is a barrier? Because even at the start uh, with you, Anita, I was saying, oh, well, I'm going to need some convincing. <laughs> <laughs> but I quite enjoyed the use of the crystal earlier on. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, so how much of that is mm. prohibitive to your work? Very. You know, um, part of the protocol would be to check willingness. And if that's mm. one of the first things that come up, we need to then work through why is the person not willing? Yeah. What mm -hmm. are the fears there, the anxieties or the concerns? Or how is the behavior or the pain serving them in some way? Yes. Sometimes mm -hmm. we have secondary gain on things. Mm -hmm. So right. we need to also then work mm -hmm. through that just as much as a session on what they're coming for, just to check that they're in alignment with being willing. So they, then we can continue with more openness to receive the shifts. And if it doesn't happen, you don't <coughs> carry on working with it? Well, usually the person then can get some breakthrough and we'll work through it and continue. But yes, in those rare cases, if they're not willing, then they would discontinue. Mm -hmm. yes. If I can just add, I actually like to have a client who is more skeptical than coming to me with a grocery list of things they want to achieve and wish to achieve. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually easier for me to work with a skeptic. In, really? Yep. Yeah, because what is lovely with the tapping, it's they're working with the process and they are experiencing the shifts and changes very quickly. And I get, we measure it on a scale of zero to 10 before we start. So yeah. There's the event itself, the emotions around it, and then the physical feelings. And on that scale of zero to 10, they can see and feel the difference and feel the shift taking place. And there's nothing more satisfying than that as a result because they've changed. Yeah, I couldn't influence that, that. Shift. they felt the physical shift. So I actually prefer to have that skepticism, healthy skepticism, mm. but I do prefer also to have somebody who is willing to try something as a complementary therapy. I, yeah. don't, I don't necessarily really like the word alternative because it's either this or this. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Whereas we, what we do is complementary, and it's complementary with mainstream mm. medical mm. science. So mm. why can't they cohabit and mm -hmm. coexist and mm. work with each other and support each other? And for you, Yanita, with crystals, was I a tough client? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I love. Um, I actually don't have a preference. A lot of the times people will come to me and say, I don't believe in it. And just take the crystal home. <laughs> just sit with it. <laughs> Make friends with it. And before you know it, 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 it becomes, you can feel mm -hmm. it. You can't help. Because like I said earlier, crystals do. They just do. They know what they, they need to do. Um, and they just do it. They don't compete for other things. They just, mm. they just do. So even if you are a non-believer, if you don't believe these things happen, just take the crystal and hold it. Yeah. Be yeah. with it for a while. Put yeah. it in your room, on your desk, in your bedroom. Yes. Mm. And before you, before and observe you know, the rest. Mm. Well, well, you've all been so does. fantastic. <laughs> Thank you for letting us Thank in you. on what is your passion and the work, your life's work. Thank you, thank thank you so very much for having us. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. That was great. So thank you to all my guests. I hope that you enjoyed that, that your eyes were opened to the complementary forms of healing <laughs> that are there. Tonight's episode has truly like been that. an eye-opening <laughs> one. <laughs> and there are all these multitudes of healing opportunities that exist. Do join us tomorrow evening as we delve deep into the subject of drug abuse, something that's really, really close to my heart. From me and the Real Talk team, it's good night.
Real Talk is proudly sponsored by Huawei P20 Pro and MTN. Each week for 10 weeks, we're giving away the latest Huawei P20 Pro and 10 gigabytes once-off MTN data to 10 amazing storytellers. All you have to do is share your special moments with us. Follow at Huawei ZA and at MTN ZA and tag us with hashtag Huawei P20 and hashtag Real Talk Moments. We want to see and hear your stories and create lasting connections across the country. Each week there's a different theme, so keep checking our social pages for details and you could be a winner.